Today we must increase our intentionality about getting closer to God. In the climate that we live in today, we see everything being done quickly all around us. Everything is done real, real fast. You can sell your house in two weeks. You can buy another house in one day. You can stand and be in a conversation with one, somebody and transfer $1,000 into their account. Never going to the bank. Everything is fast. And so the church has brought on this notion that everything got to be fast. Come higher. Our subtopic is change, challenge, and choice. Our sermonic text will be coming from Psalms 24, verses 3 and 4. That simply says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. He that's been changed. Amen. Father, we thank you right now for what you have done thus far. We have certainly enjoyed feasting in your presence. We thank you for Psalms 133. God, that where there's unity, where there's togetherness, where people come together, you are all about unity. Father, you said you commanded a blessing. So we thank you for the blessings that's being released even now. Because we're coming together according to your word. We're asking God now, Father, that you would take over me. Help me, God, to just hide behind you. Hide behind your cross. Use my mouth as your mouthpiece. Let me not utter one word that you didn't say. We ask all of these things. Bless the hearers. Massage the hearts of those who are here. You sent the ones for this word. And allow them to receive. Help them to receive. We thank you now. In the name of the Father and of the Son. And of the Holy Ghost we pray. Let us all say, Lord. Lord. I feel the massage. Working in, my heart. working in my heart. Let me receive. Let me receive. In, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. As you rest to your seat. Thank you, Jesus. I want to begin by clearly stating a fact. I don't know about you. I don't know your level of hearing or I don't know your level of seeing. But this one thing I do know. I hear the Lord calling his church to come up to higher ground. As this world is wasting away, God is calling his children to come up to higher ground. It's amazing that they sang, build the church and change me. A blind man or even a man with poor vision is able to see and discern that things are severely changing and they're changing very rapidly. There was a time when America was in good hands and we could trust what folks said to us. We could trust the direction. But today she's in the hands of people whose decisions cannot be trusted. From our local civic leaders, amen, to the highest office in our land. The world is in their hands, but not the children of God. Amen. We are different. We have been called out and set aside for God's good pleasure. Amen. Amen. First Peter said, 2 and 9 says that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy 
nation, that we should show forth the praises of him who hath called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Put your hands together if you're a believer. And you know that I'm a believer and I know they call me funny. I know they call me peculiar, but that's all right with me. Do you know why we are peculiar people? It's not because we wear our dresses down to our feet, brother. It's not because we wear all white and not because our sleeves are coming down to, to our wrists. It's not because we don't wear makeup. They call us peculiar. Hallelujah. Because we don't worry about things. They call us funny. They, they call us different. They, they say we got a different mindset. But we don't worry about decisions made to increase the gas prices. Because I'm peculiar. We don't worry about impending threats of food shortages. Because we are peculiar. We don't worry about the threat that there's no more baby formula. I don't know if they don't have any more baby formula, but I tell you what, when you have your baby, there'll be some. We don't worry. We don't worry about these things because Psalms 118 and 8 said, it is better to put your trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. That is the deciding factor. That's the line that draws the difference in us. And in the world, Jeremiah 17 and 5 said, Thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusteth in man and makes flesh his arm or his provider. Everybody knows Proverbs 3 and 5, and we can say it together. The word says we are to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not into our own understanding, but in all our ways, and he shall. We are considered peculiar because in the midst of all of the calamities and chaos that's surrounding us as God's children, we don't worry because our trust is in God. Amen. Philippians 4, 19, I don't, we don't have to worry. Don't you like being different? Being different will take some stress off of your head. Turn the TV off and get in the word of God. And you'll have peace. Philippians 4 and 19 said, and my God, I don't know about your God. I, I think we own the same, I think we serve the same God. But it says, my God will supply all of my need according to his riches in glory. Oh, God. And then I said, I need to go over here just for a minute. This is what makes us so different. Amen. It says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? What am I going to be afraid of? Hallelujah. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, come up against me, come up against my flesh, the Bible said they stumbled. In other words, what they planned for me. There's a thing called a boomerang. <laughs> Somebody playing something against me this week alone. But it came back and boomeranged on them. Because the Lord is my light and my salvation. Though in host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise against me, in this will I be confident. I don't know about you, but I'm confident in my little sanctified soul this morning. Because I watched the enemy fall. Hallelujah. And he falls every time. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that I'm going to seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what the experience is. I'm seeking, hallelujah, to dwell in the house of the Lord 
all the days of my life and to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire. Why? Because in a time of trouble, In a time of trouble, the Bible said, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. That's why we are peculiar. Call me weird. Call me strange. Call me different, but don't forget to call me covered. We're talking about change. The feeling of our atmosphere has changed. The concern for others has changed. The concern for human life has dramatically changed. Matthew 24 and 10, listen to the word. Matthew 24, 10 through 13 says, during the last days, sin is going to get worse and worse. And because of that, the love for other people will grow cold. Then it says, but he that can endure, he that can go through and not give up, he that can be talked about and not talked back. He that can persevere in troubled times. It said he shall endure these awful things. The same shall be saved in the end. This is no time for getting in our flesh and acting out and talking back and getting upset and acting like we can't see the spirit of the enemy. The Bible says that we're not to be ignorant of the enemy's devices. When we see somebody acting up, just pray for them. Just pray for them. Don't get mad. Understand there's a devil and a demonic presence that's working through them to come against your life. Our passion to satisfy our creator has changed. Our desire to be humble people has changed. I put on Facebook the other day, whatever happened to the prayer that used to say, Lord, decrease so that I can increase. You don't hear people praying that no more. They're saying, Lord, make me shine. Give me some bling. Let me stand before people. Let me be glorified. Our desire to put others before ourselves has changed. Our desire for purity has changed. Our desire to be holy has changed. What's happening with, with the body of Christ? Now, I know I'm not talking to him in his image, and I'm not talking to Abba. We're talking about the entire body of Christ. Where is the bride of Christ? What has happened to the purity and the holiness that the bride is supposed to present? You think Jesus is coming back for the bride that we're calling the bride? He's not coming back for a harlot. He's not coming back for a church that's sold out to the world and acting like the world and looking like the world and doing like the world. That's a harlot. Oh, this, hold down. Our desire to spend time in the presence of the Lord has changed dramatically. And I know I'm in the house. The world has put such a strain on the believer. And we have been under this pressure to conform to its ways for so long that some of us have grown satisfied with chill bumps and just a trickle of God's presence. I got to have more than that. A trickle is not going to hold me. I got a strong constitution. A trickle today won't hold me tomorrow. Oh, God, just because we have not committed a flagrant sin and just because we are getting by with really not being close to God, we feel like we're doing 
okay. And that God is pleased with us. But may I submit to you that God is not satisfied with a trickle. He wants to overtake you. Matter of fact, he wants to take you into overflow. The only reason that you're not in overflow right now is because you're satisfied with a trickle. God wants us to, the way we started service today, that's what God is looking for. I didn't know what Pastor Tiffany was going to do. I said, I don't know if she's going to go straight into worship. I was watching and praying and watching and praying and saying, oh, she, is she going to stick to her agenda and go through the song? Or is she just going to start moving into worship? This is what God is calling us to. To sense him. Okay? And to move with him. Ah, oh, God. He wants to overtake your confidence. He wants to overtake your re relationships. Uh, he wants to overtake your faith. You should not. St we still shouldn't be living on the faith that we had last year. Oh, God. Every day we ought to be stretching ourselves and believing for more than what we've seen God ever do. I shouldn't believe for what I see God do for you. That's great, but that's you. I want to believe. For the things that I have not seen. Amen. You ought to be believing for the things that you have never seen before. Amen. That's what God is moving us. That's why he's moving this church. The only way you're going to see things that you've never seen, you got to believe for it. But what happens in the body of Christ, we see what this church did, and we see what God did for that family, and we see what God did for that, for that person, and so we have enough faith to say, God, will you do it for me? No, that's not the kind of faith that God is calling for. God is calling for faith to believe in something we have never seen. Can you stretch it that far? Can you believe for greater than your neighbor? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. We have changed. So much has changed. Today, we must increase our intentionality about getting closer to God. In the climate that we live in today, we see everything being done quickly all around us. Everything is done real, real fast. You can sell your house in two weeks. You can buy another house in one day. You can stand and be in a conversation with one, somebody and transfer $1,000 into their account. Never going to the bank. Everything is fast. And so the church has brought on this notion that everything got to be fast. Nothing should really take real time. I ought to be able to fast for 30 minutes and, and have the power of God resting on my life. The devil is a deceiver and a lying wonder. Come on. We are taking on the mindset of the world that we don't really need to spend that much time with God. How many hours are you spending with him in a week's time? I'm going to let you think. How much hours or how many minutes are you giving to him? We got 168 hours in seven days. How much time? How many minutes? How many hours are you spending? But the girl came and mind changed me. We ready to fall out. There can be no change. If we're not willing to put in time with him. Time. The Lord says, come higher. And I need more of your time. We're trying to get closer to God without making any sacrifice without making any changes, without, without removing weights. Hebrews 12 and 1 said, Wherefore, seeing we are all combats about with so great a cloud of witnesses, 
Let us lay aside every what? And the. What is the difference? If you don't lay the weight aside, it's going to become a sin. So the Bible says we're to lay it aside. Every small thing that besets us, that causes us to stumble and keep starting over, that causes us to come back Sunday after Sunday, needing somebody to resurrect our spirit and resuscitate us again and refresh our faith. Because we're walking around carrying weights and not putting them down. But he said, put them down. Why do you worry? I'm God. I've got you. We want to come closer without total submission to his word. But may I submit to you efforts to make real change is required. And without you making those efforts, there will be no change. Today we want to focus on three things that you will face as you... You said I'm ready to change. Didn't somebody say that? Three things that you will face as you prepare to go higher in the Lord. If you will help me announce my topic, challenge, change, choice. Change. Change is defined as to make radically different. Radically is the operative word. Not to make different. Because I can be different from you in the world, but I can still kind of resemble you. Radically, it says, radically different. To transform. They used to have those things called power rangers. Is that, was that them that used to transform? No, the transformers. They come out and be somebody else. They come out and be somebody else. Change means transform. So when they look back at you, you don't look the same. They're trying to figure out who you are. It means to take a different position, a different course, or a different direction. I want you to know how many people here today say, I just love the change. Lift your hand and just say, oh, I just love the change. Come on, tell the truth. I can't stand change. I do it because it's required. But nobody won't likes change. Don't tell me I can't wear jeans and I, I worn jeans all my life. And now I'm a part of your stuff and you tell me I can't wear jeans. You're asking me to change. Tell me I have high blood pressure and I can't eat anymore. Somebody hold my fat back. Any more salted food. Because they already know. <laughs> you asking me to change. And I'm struggling. I don't even want to take the pills. Because uh, I, I want to sit back on a Sunday afternoon. I want to eat me some collard greens. And I like that piece they put in. I ain't going to call it what it is. <laughs> but you asking me to change. I don't want to change. I like the way things are. Even though I'm... Even though the doctors say I might be sick. On, Even though it's not good for me. On, and what you're telling me is good for me. Because I don't like change, I'm struggling. The reason people struggle with coming higher when God is calling them higher is because coming higher requires change. We want the anointing, but we don't want to change. We want the anointing, but I can't stop talking about you. I want the anointing, but I can't stop trying to drag brothers behind me. I want the anointing, but I'm not willing to change the way I think, the way I act, the way I talk. How am I going to get the anointing? Say it again. I'm not. The man told me I won't go get it. Young fella, give him a hand. He know. You're not going to get it. In order to change, we have to let go of some things 
that we may hold dear to our heart. And how do we do that when God is calling us to a higher ground? Let me tell you something. When Moses, Moses, so much I can say. Moses killed the man in Egypt. Ran. Was 40 years old. Ran. Went out into the desert. God didn't kill him because he had a call over his life. Went out into the desert. Met his wife. Had some children. Just living their life thinking I ain't got to leave anymore. The call is over. I ditched Pharaoh and his son. The call is over. But how about while one day he was on the same journey. He walked every day. Same journey. See the same trees. Hear the same birds. But all of a sudden one day, when God decides it's time for you to come higher, boy. He looks and sees something that he's never seen before. And the bush, the Bible says the bush is on fire. It's an inferno. And Moses says, I need to turn aside to see. What is this? What is this? I feel God calling me higher. He was going up a mountain. He sensed the presence of God calling him higher. So he thinks, I'm just going to step over there and see. What is this? But the Lord said, whoa, 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 boy, wait a minute. You my leader, but you ain't all that. In order for you to come higher and see what this is, you got to take something off. Take off your shoes. Every time God calls you higher, he's calling you to remove something. You got to let something go. And a lot of times we say, God, I want to go higher. I want to know you more. But we're not willing to put down some stuff. We're not willing to forgive. <laughs> we're not willing to let stuff go. We're not willing to let people off the hook. Well, you did that to me five years ago. <laughs> 15. Well, I was five and you were 40, but I'm still mad about it. My life has turned out the way it turned out all because of what you, you got to let that stuff go. That's old. That's old news. And it's time to move forward so you can go higher in the Lord. Moses had to take his shoes off. Change. Now, the challenge. In order to change some things are going to have to die, and nobody likes death. Amen. How many people say, I like death? If you do see me in hospitality, <laughs> we're going to pray with you. Some things got to die. We don't like death because death is painful. It's not always physically painful, but mentally death is painful. You recognize that you're about to transition from this life over to another life. And death can sometimes be a, a slow process. Walk with me. Nobody wants to die. The truth is we all fear death. I know we got the little gang bangers on the street. I ain't scared. I, you know what I'm saying? All that kind of mess. Put a gun to the head and watch them. What you say? Oh, Lord have mercy. I ain't going to put that on the mic. He said they're going to mess around and mess the clothes up. That's, a, that's what he said. Death. Nobody wants to die. There's something called thanatophobia. And that, that's an intense fear of death and dying. Many of us, most of us, are afraid to die. And, 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 and. some common fears of dying is, will it be painful? What is it going to be like? Am I going to see Grandma Grace? Uh, the fear of loss of control to death. Having to give over to your power to something that is greater than you are. That's the fear of death. What's going to happen to me after I die? What's going to happen? Uh, uh, they don't know how they will get through death uh, when it comes. That's a fear that people have. What is the process going to look like when I begin to die? The greatest fear. I took a class and I was in school for my master's. And it was, it was called death and dying. And the greatest fear that people have is dying alone. 
And likewise it is in the spirit we feel that we need a partner to, to come with us on this journey. On. I don't want any partners unless they're walking right where I'm walking. Because yeah. I don't need any hold-ups, hang-ups, push-ups, whatever. I need to be free to walk the journey with God. Ain't no buddy system. But I'm going to tell you that death in the spirit realm, in order to pull down more anointing or pull down the will of God, I think when you anoint it, you anoint it. To pull down the will of God, the carnal pieces of us has got to die. And there's no buddy system when we die in the natural. There'll be no buddy system when we stand before the throne. I look for my brother here, he'd be like, no, I told you you weren't going to get it. There's no buddy system. You got to walk through this thing alone. So it is when it comes to dying in the flesh. You got to walk through this thing alone. Nobody can gather and come with you, team up with you, and help you walk this thing out when it's time to die. Last Sunday service, we experienced the glory of God. How many were here last Sunday? I know we're missing quite a bit today. But I'm telling you, the glory of God came into place, and it came in so strong. We didn't know really how to respond to it. I was trying to talk the people through it, and I couldn't find the words to give them, to talk them into receiving more of God and what God was calling us to. And last Sunday he said, I'm calling this church higher. He's bidding us to come closer now. He wants his children to come closer together and closer to him. There's such a strong war going on. And listen, Satan is fighting for the minds of the believers. Tell somebody, Satan is fighting for your mind. You better go ahead and go higher. He's fighting for the minds of the believer on every level. He's fighting for the minds of our children. We sat and watched a, a video Pastor Tiffany showed me, a little two-year-old kid, a three-year-old kid, saying that the gay BCs, and, and every letter stood for something in that whole population of people. Wow. You should Google it. You know why? Because you need to see what's going on. Don't have your head stuck in the sand and be thinking everything is still hunky-dory. He was saying that, reciting the gay BCs. He's fighting for the minds of our leaders. Uh, oh, God, who God has called us to lead. Hallelujah. And the only way that we can survive these attacks is if we pray as if we die, as if we submit ourselves to God. Lord, Paul said, I keep under myself, under my body, the Lord Jesus. I fast and I pray because you won't survive today. Today is not even like it was yesterday. It's already gotten worse since yesterday when you close your eyes. Every time God calls us higher, it's important that we submit and go because he is saving us from the next shift that the world is going to take. You got to understand that the enemy's job is to try to keep up with God. It started in the garden. He saw the power of God. And he said, I'm going to be like him. I'm going to sit on the sides of the north. The people and the angels are going to worship me. He tries to keep up with God. So every time that God calls the, the church higher, it's because the enemy has already made the last shift with the world that God made with the church. Now he said, elevate your mind. It's time to go higher in the Lord. Hallelujah. As God shifts, say that with me. As God shifts, show the enemy. the enemy. Because he's trying to keep up. We got to understand when he's calling us higher, that he's calling us to remove stuff and to die in some areas of our lives. The higher call always means it's time to go deeper. We think the higher call is time to start running around and telling somebody about what he called you to do. You excited because you got a call. So what? The question is, what are you going to do with the call? How is the call going to be manifested in your life? How not about shot you? You got a call. Then that means God is calling you to go deeper. Yeah. He, he, you don't plant a tree and it stands six feet tall. You put the seed in the ground. And for a while, the roots and all are growing. Now, after a while, you'll start seeing some budding on the ground. And after another while, you'll start seeing a, a seedling come up. After another while, you'll see a little plant. Then you'll see a tree. Right. 
But that's not what we do now in the body of Christ. We get a call and we're ready to run. Put the t uh, Pastor, you can just put the tag on my back right there. Sir. Let me move my hair over because when I go in, I want them to see my title. I want you to see my title when I, when I come in. You, you need to know who I am. I, you know, you haven't grown to it yet. David was a king, but he won't till 30 until he started ruling. Thank you, Jesus. Higher call means it's time to go, to grow deeper. It also means that it's time when God says come higher. It means it's time to, Romans 8, said it's time to mortify your members. Mortify the deeds in your body. It's, 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 it's time to work on you now. It's time to examine a little bit closer. Examine yourself a little bit closer. Okay? That's what, when he said come higher, don't think that means to jump on the stage. That means jump on your knees and ask God, okay, I'm down here now. How do I do this? Tell me, how, I thank you for the revelation and understanding of my calling, but tell me now, show me how to work it out. Amen. Work the things through me so that the call can work Amen. according to the church that you're trying to build. When God wakes you up in the middle of the night, he's calling you to come higher. He's calling you to come higher and to come closer. That's your prayer. When you begin to sense a dissatisfaction in your walk, you know how it is, you be excited, and everything's great, and yeah, 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 yeah. And then all of a sudden, things kind of start settling down, and you start, then, you know what? If you don't pray at that moment, you're going to start looking at Apostle Mary. Something wrong. You're going to start looking at Pastor Matish. Something's wrong. You're going to start looking at Brother. He just played the, the stuff too hard. Uh, C3J, he doesn't play hard enough. Uh, Shannon, she doesn't sing high enough. Uh, Pastor Rod, you just ain't hitting it right. When you're not. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. When you become dissatisfied, it's not always that something is wrong with the church. Sometimes God is just trying to call you in a higher place because he's trying to save you from something. Don't use that time looking around at other people trying to find something wrong with the church. Use that time to seek God and say, Lord, I'm dissatisfied. What is it? And I'll tell you what it'll be. He'll say, because I'm calling you higher and you're not going. I've been calling you higher and you're not moving. You got to know the difference. Now we're going to deal with the choice. Look at what happened to a city that was so far out of control that God called them to higher ground. He called the leaders to higher ground. Turn with me to Genesis 19, and we're going to get out of your way so that we can pray. Genesis 19. Thank you, Jesus. And this city really reminds me of the United States of America. And I can see God calling the church higher through this word. So there came two angels to Sodom at evening. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. He recognized that some holy folk were coming in the city, the Bible says. And he said, behold, now, my Lord, turn in, I pray, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and you shall rise up early and go on your way. Lot knew what was in America. I'm sorry, Sodom. <laughs> Lot knew what was going on. He knew that the people's minds were out of control. He knew that the people had made up in their mind that they were going to be who they wanted to be. They were going to be what they wanted to be. They were going to try to change. I think it's Daniel 10, 25. So when they, they seek to change the laws. So Lot said, here comes some men of God. I, I certainly cannot allow them to stay in the streets. They stay in the streets up here in America. I mean Sodom. They may not make it out. So 
Lot begged them to stay. And they said, no, we'll be able to divide in the street all night. Lot was like, no, nah, you don't know these streets. <laughs> you don't know these streets. <laughs> you won't abide. And he pressed upon them greatly. And they turned, he begged them, and they turned into him and entered into his house. And he made them a feast. And they did break, break unleavened bread. And they did eat. The Bible says, but before they went to sleep, the men of the city entered, even, I'm sorry, even the men of Lot come past the house. They suckered the whole house. They surrounded the man's house. And they asked him, they said, where is, am I on the right verse? Can't even see. And he made him a feast. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, circled the house round, both old and young. Old and young, do you hear me? These spirits out here now, they, they not, it, it's not subject to any age. You can find a 90-year-old man and a 12-year-old a boy with the same passion and desires that are displeasing unto the Lord. And so they said that both young and old, and all the people from every quarter, my God, and they called unto Lot, Lot! said unto him, where are the men which came in to you this night? We saw the men when they came in the city. Bring them out unto us that we may have sex with them. And Lot went out of the door. Lot trying to protect angels. The Bible said Lot went outside of the door. I got to keep finding my place. What verse am I on? And shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brethren, do not, don't do this wicked thing. Behold, now, I have two daughters which have not even been with a man. Let me, please, I beg you, please, let me bring them out to you and do, you can do whatever you want to do to them. But don't touch these men. Only until these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. In other words, that's why I brought them inside. Because I knew you. I know the spirit that dwells in you guys. And I'm trying to save them from you. And they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came to end to sojourn and, and he will needs to be a judge. Now we'll deal we will deal worse with thee, with you, than with them. So he said, move. They said, move. And they began to press sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. America, I mean Sodom, out of control. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them. And shut to the door. And when they and then they smote the men that they were at the door of the house with blindness. So now the, 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 the angels stuck their hand out the door, snatched Lot in. After Lot got in, they closed the door, and the Bible says he knocked them blind. Every one of them. He made them blind. But blindness did not stop them. The Bible says, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. They were still trying and feeling on the sides of the house and the windows. And I don't know if they had windows. The Flintstones didn't. But they were feeling all on sides. Trying to find a way to get inside to rape these men. What verse am I on? And the men, thank you, said unto Lot, has thou, has thou here any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whatever thou hast in the city? Bring them out of this place. I'm getting too old for my Bible. Y'all see it's been used, though. I'm going to have to read. So they said, bring them out of this place. 
For we will destroy this place, the angel said, because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. Don't you think when we're praying and some of you are fasting, a lot of you are called to intercede and you're praying for this nation. Don't think that God is not hearing the prayer. The cries are coming up for America and the condition that she's in and the billions of babies that she's killed. And these cries are coming up in the ears of our father. They said, and the Lord has sent us to destroy this whole city. And Lot went out and spake unto his son-in-laws, which married his daughters. And he said, up, get you up, get you out of this place. For the Lord would destroy the city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-laws. In other words, the city, what we're talking about today. We say the world has gotten into us and we have changed. The city got into Lot's son. And when Lot began to give them the warning that the men are here, they began to laugh at Lot. They began to say, you crazy. These men are not uh, angels. How are they gonna, two men going to be able to destroy an entire city? And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot. They ran to him and said, Lot, get up, get up. Arise, take your wife. And thy two daughters which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, what's that tell you about Lot? He was in Lot too. Lot had enough sense and discernment to recognize angels, but he was moving slow. You know somebody come and tell me my house is going to blow up? I'm not trying to get no credit cards, no diamond rings. I'm not trying to get an insurance policy. I'm running out because I believe what they said. But Lot was still moving slow because the city had also gotten inside a lot. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand. At this point, the men are dragging him. Sit down. The men saying, come on. He grabbed his hands and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth. They finally snatched him enough out of his chair, I guess, to get out of the house. And the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him outside of Raleigh. I mean Sodom. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, now run. Escape for your life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. In other words, don't even stand in Garner. I don't want you to stay in Smithfield. I don't want you to stay in Raleigh. I don't want you to stay in Durham. I need you to get to High Point. I need you to go higher. Get to High Point. Get to Greensboro. Hallelujah. Get to the mountains. Escape to the mountain. There it is. <laughs> Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. If you keep staying where you're at, not being willing to take stuff off and change, you're going to stay here with the city. You're going to stay here with the, 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 the evil anointing that's over the city. And it's going to get in you because you refuse to change. And Lot said unto them, Oh, not so, my Lord, or he's still trying to bargain. Behold, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, uh, uh, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, uh, uh, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life, and I cannot escape to the mountain. Look. That's a sea law. I'm going to keep going. Lest some evil take me and I die. Did the man of God just tell you if you stay here, you're going to be consumed? Doesn't that show that something had gotten inside of Lot? There was something in the city going on in the city that Lot kind of liked. It was in his spirit. He, he didn't want to depart from it. And that's how it is when it's time to die. It's time to change. Well, there's some things we don't want to depart from. There's some stuff we say, well, I, I let all this go, but I'm going to hold on to these keys. Uh, I'm going to hold on to this brother over here. I, I let everything, and you can hold my hand. I, I let everything. It's all right. It's all right, Pastor James. Ain't it? I, I'm going to hold on here. But I'm going to let everything else go. That's not what God has called. God said let it all go so you can go higher in him. 
Behold, now this city is near to flee. Uh, it's a, another little place around uh, Zebulun Way I can flee unto. And, it, and it's a, a little one. Uh, it's a little small town. Uh, uh, let me escape there. You know why? Just in case you don't burn the city and I can come back and see some more stuff. I'm giving how God gave it to me. Is it not a little one, a little small town? And my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow the city for the which thou hast spoken. Now look. The reason they didn't overthrow the city is because they had somebody praying for them. Abraham was praying for the city that at least one person, five people, he came, he brought all the way down. Can you just let, if you find one righteous, God, can you not destroy the whole city? The Lord said, if I find one righteous, so that tells us that Lot was unrighteous. Hast thee escaped hither? For I cannot do anything till thou come out of this place. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. Keep it moving. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar in Zebulun. <laughs> then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah a brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew, you know they found the city. I watched the video, you ever seen that? I watched the documentary, they found the city. That's underwater now. But they said what destroyed it. God caused a volcano. He said it caused a volcano to overthrow, to just spew out. And it burned and killed everything in the city, all the ashes, all that. They found it underwater. So this is a true story. This is not uh, fiction. And he overthrew these cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. So he killed everything, the trees. He killed the little pigs, the three. He killed them all. But his wife looked back from behind him. The wife just couldn't take it. The Bible doesn't tell us what the wife was into or what she was doing or what it was that fed her spirit, her soul. The Bible didn't tell her, but whatever it was, it was such a pull for her. See, God was calling her to go higher. And, and on her way trying to go higher. On your way trying to go higher. You got to understand that the enemy's going to pull out all stops. He's going to make it very difficult for you to move higher to higher ground. But when he calls you to go higher, you got to get to stepping. I'm coming because God's trying to save me from something in my life. But there was something in the city that was inside, had gotten inside of that woman. And she walked and said, let me just, one more time. God speaking to something like, one more time. Don't you know that one time was her last time? That one more time was the last opportunity that God gave her. And he didn't give it to her because he took her life. The Bible says she's walking. Behind her husband, they running. And she said, hold on, baby. Let me just get one more. And when she turned, life was gone. You don't know when your last time is. Keep on dabbling. Keep on dabbling when God is trying to call you higher. You don't know when that last time is going to be. But the Bible says life left her instantaneously. And she became a pillar of salt. And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place. We're stopping right there. So the Bible says, Psalms that we opened up with, we're going to close with. Thank you, Lord. God is good. Give him a hand. We're going to close on this. Psalms 24, and it says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Now, is the question. 
Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath and uh, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. So the Bible that stops right there, thank you Holy Ghost, said when he call us higher and we have clean hands and we have a pure heart, there's a blessing in the higher place. Because the Bible says he shall, that man shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him. How many can say, I'm seeking him or I'm going to seek him more? Let me say that right there. I'm making up my mind today, Pastor, that I'm going to seek him more because I want to go to the higher place. I know that God is shifting the church because of the enemy is shifting the land. And I know I got to go higher. And in order for me to go higher, I got to mortify the deeds of my members. I got to take some stuff off. I got to throw some shoes off. I got to check my attitude. I, there's some things I got to change. Ah, oh, this good old steak. He shall receive the blessing of the Lord. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. So the Bible says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. I don't care where you are. If you lift up your head and your hands and say, God, take me to higher ground. The scripture says the king of glory shall, shall come in. And then it says, who is this king of glory? My God, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. God calling you higher because he's saving you for some stuff. But he's also preparing you for battle. He's mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is. Somebody say he is and jump to your feet. He is. He is the king of glory. Right now before we pray, because God is calling you to prayer. I want us just to salute him because he's God. Because he's the one that holds the power in his hands to bring change to your life. It's him.